Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. Come, but it is that time. Go out to the Jim's Firearms Hotline and chat with our guy Luke Johnson who covers these New Orleans Saints for The Advocate with us every Thursday. Luke, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Um, I, do you sense the Saints are still moving in free agency right now yeah yeah i thought there was there was going to be a chance that they made uh they made you know one more kind of notable move um you know something kind of other than the free agent um like special team in their sign this morning um but the closer and closer we get to draft day the more and more it feels like they are going to just kind of scour that uh that free agent market after the draft um just see how kind of things play out in the draft see what their needs are and then, uh, and then, kind of continue to address the team from there. We, we've seen the team do this in recent years. You know, a, a couple of years ago, they signed Tyron Matthew and Jarvis Landry both after the draft. Um, there are some benefits to doing that. You don't have to like account for the signings in the um, compensatory pick formula, um, but you know, at the same time, you're also having to wait out other teams and, and having them make a move on you. So, I, I still just don't think that they are completely done addressing the team in free agency, though. You mentioned Tyron Matthew and Jarvis Landry. They uh, they went to a fine institution down the road from where I'm sitting right now. Uh, Patrick Peterson attended the same one. Is that a name that would make some sense on a veteran med- um, uh, minimum deal? Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, it, it kind of depends. I, I mean, I, I think that um, you know, at this stage of his career, Patrick is. Uh, yeah, it, it just kind of depends on what they view him as. Um, yeah, I, I think they could still use some help at safety. I, I don't know if if Patrick is going to play safety in the NFL. Um, yeah, I think his last year in Pittsburgh, he was playing more of a, you know, kind of a slot corner role. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, you know, especially given who they have on the team right now, he and Tyron are obviously very, very, very close. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't, I don't know. I, that, that one's kind of a, I've thought about it over the course of this, and I still don't really know how I feel about it. I talked about a couple of offensive linemen earlier this week as potential targets, very different situations. Certainly, this in this case, far different than Patrick Peterson as well. Makai Becton, who was a top 15 pick in the draft, is a mountain of a human with all kinds of potential and an injury history in New York. Is that somebody that the Saints could take a look at? I mean, I think so. Um, you know, when you're looking at the list of, of free agents, offensive tackles his name kind of pops off the list because he's he's the only one out of those guys who's not like 30 years old or 35 years old or is coming off of major injury and hasn't played any football in, in a couple of years like david bakhtiari um you know I, I think if i were the saints i would at the very least take a flyer on him if he's interested um you know you offer him a one-year deal let him come in and be like hey compete for a starting job and, and if you win it you know if you he's still only i think 24 years old mm-hmm. um you know, he's, he's got a lot of time left in his career if he can make something out of it. Um, so, you know, I, I, I would be approaching that if I were the Saints. Uh, you know, the free agent options at tackle, I, I mean, there's still some names out there. There's still some guys with with starting caliber experience. Um, you know, I mentioned Bakhtiari. Um, you know, there's a, a couple others, guys who've, who've started games in recent years. Uh, Donovan Smith, the former Chiefs yeah. and Buccaneers tackle. Um yeah, there's uh That's the other name I brought up was Donovan Smith. I mean, what yeah, do you what yeah. do you think about him? I mean, I think he's the best available tackle. Beckton could be very good, but I think he's you know, kind of a similar player to Trevor Penning. Um he's hugely talented, uh, came in the league with a lot of promise and it just hasn't delivered on it for various reasons. Um so, you know, I I think there's some risk that comes with that. I think that like a player like Donovan Smith would be a lot um a lot less risk involved in that sort of uh, that sort of a move. These guys played on championship teams. Um, you know, he's played a high level of football. He's he's up there in age. I think he's thirty two, maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are those are two I think clear options still available. The tackle market has been very very slow to move, um, and yeah, I think there's there's chances for the Saints to to go out and get somebody where they're they're not just like forcing their hand. But again, I think this is going to a lot of it is going to depend on what happens in the draft, and you know they they could feel very very strongly about one of these tackles, and they get them, and and they feel less compelled to to go out and make a splash move. Um, so I, I think we're we're just going to kind of probably have to wait and see till May for these sorts of things. 
we had this conversation like a month ago, and I, I want to revisit it because I have championed the one-year signing for a Willie Gay, a one-year signing uh, for a Chase Young because it does not tie you up like the Saints have been tied up in the past, moving money forward, kicking the can down the road, as people like to say. Um, that's the way the Saints have, have generally operated under this this crew. Um do you feel like that's the way they're moving with this season? Is they're going to give some one-year deals and not necessarily go for that deal that they're going to end up spending more and more money on on the back end of? Yeah, I think so. And I think they've even taken a little bit more of a cautious approach with how they are restructuring contracts. You know, there's there's still two guys on this team right now in, in uh, Alvin Kamara and, and Taysom Hill who are pretty big chips. Um, you know, those are guys who in the past they would have – they would absolutely touch your contracts, especially in the last couple of years, and they're still kind of coming out from the COVID mess. Um, but they haven't touched those contracts this year, and I think the reasoning is pretty obvious. You know, you, you're seeing it play out in free agency, like you said. Um, you know, they, they are you're trying their best to, to to remain competitive while also digging out of this hole that they've they've had to create, and, and it was out of necessity too. I, I mean, you got, you got to remember the the 2021 salary cap after the COVID year. Um, it dropped like 18%. And this is after year by year by year by year, like decades of history where you could reliably predict it to go up by 10 or $12 million a year. Um, so really in reality, it was like a $25 million drop in salary cap. And when you're a team that operates the way the Saints are on, on these razor thin margins, it, it just created this this crazy situation where they had to do all this crazy stuff to get out of it. And, and they're trying to get back Closer to the middle, I, I think it it'd be surprising to me if they were ever like truly in the middle of the 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 like NFL salary cap list, um, just because of the way they like to do these contracts. But at, at least not be like you know number thirty two or thirty one every single year and having to create eighty ninety million dollars in cap space. I think that's why you're seeing them operate a little bit like this 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 off season. Do you think that is trouble for Dennis Allen because they're not going to go out there and and maybe slightly overpay in terms of year and dollars for the impact players that they generally would reach on that oftentimes haven't even worked out. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I think it's trouble for Dennis Allen that he went uh, you know, seven and 10 and nine and eight in his first two seasons. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I think that's, that's the trouble. It's, it's creating a lot of pressure for this year to produce. Um, he's got the the quarterback that he selected. Um, you know, he's he's had the input on the roster decisions. He's going to have his hand, his fingerprints on this draft. Um, but at the same time, like I, you know, I've I grew up watching like the the Green Bay Packers, right? And and Ted Thompson being like just absolutely notorious for never ever ever signing a free agent. Like uh, I, I, he signed like two free agents in his entire tenure that were like more than a, a minimum contract, and they were. Julius Peppers and Charles Woodson, like two guys who you know are going to produce. Um, so I, I don't even necessarily think that like this is a bad thing for Dennis Allen. They can't go out and and be super aggressive in free agency because I, I think the, the best way to build a team always is through the draft. Um, I, the more concerning thing for me is that they have just consistently traded away the draft assets and just kind of left the, cu- the cupboard bare there. Um, and you know, when they've had a couple misses in the first round, especially these last couple of years, um, yeah, I think that's where the, the hurt is really starting to hit on this team. Um, so I mean, they, they have to nail this draft class. It was good that they got, you know, seven guys who made the roster out of last year's draft class. Like they need to have another seven this year and they need to have those guys be impact players, especially those first two picks. Realistically in the first week of the season, how many rookies do you think need to be starters? I would guess probably a tackle. And is there another spot that you need to get a starters at wide receiver? Um, you tackle for sure. Like they have to get a starting tackle out of this draft. Yeah. Um, whether that's the the 14th pick or the 45th pick, or they make a trade or something, it's it's got to happen in this draft. Um, outside of that, you know, I mean, the starters are are fairly set on this team. Um, I, I think the, the major problem with this team is depth. I, I think if they were to get another starter out of this draft, it would be a receiver. Um, I think you could see a lot of potential really enticing options being available there in the second round. 
Um, I think there's a possibility Keon Coleman is there. I think he's going to be a stud. Uh, you know, Malachi Corley is somebody who you could see fitting in really, really, really nicely with this offense. Um, I just put out a mock draft yesterday, yesterday, uh, and I had Alabama's Jermaine Burton in there. And you know, he's not this guy that put up huge numbers in college, but he averaged like 20 yards a catch in his career. And he's an explosive athlete. And you pair him with Alave and Shahid, and you've got just crazy speed on this team. You saw what the Miami Dolphins did with speed last year on the field. So, um, yeah, I think they, they could definitely get a starting pass catcher in the second round, if that's what they want to do. Um, outside of that, I, I, I feel like their starters are, are largely set on this team, I, you know, kind of across the board, I, unless there's like just a, 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 a kind of a surprise pick. Like, let's say they take Brock Bowers yeah. in the first round. Yeah, they, yeah, I think he's going to be a starter. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But like again, like the, the problem for me for this team is, is its depth and um, and its its inability to kind of weather these injury storms that they've had over the last couple of years, um, and that's that's really what they need to address. And I, I think that's why it's kind of imperative for them not to do their usual thing and just like kind of trade the house for a guy they really like. Like they need to get they need to get dudes on this team. No question about it. We'll talk about it again next week. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, man. Luke Johnson, LSU uh, Saints beat reporter for The Advocate, always with us on Thursdays. If you're looking for our Saints content, you can always find it on YouTube, Hunt on Saints on YouTube. That uh, video from that segment will be posted up there shortly after the show today, so appreciate you all for subscribing up to that channel and getting our Saints content in front, uh, in front of as many eyes as we possibly can. Trans- hey, it's on. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button, leave your comments in the section below, and hit that subscribe button. You get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.